Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the prestigious Gordon Prize Award Ceremony. Please welcome the Dean of the USC Viterbi School of Engineering, Giannis C. Yortzos. Thank you very much. Put my glasses on. On behalf of uh, USC President Carol Falk and the President of the National Academy of Engineering, John Anderson, it's with great pleasure and honor that welcome all of our guests at tonight's dinner event, which is the celebration of the award of the Gordon Prize of the National Academy of Engineering to the Grand Challenges Scholars Program. Before we proceed, I'd like to acknowledge some special guests at the head table number eight, USC President Carol Fold, and A President John Anderson and Pat Anderson, the three co-recipients of the GCSP honor, Tom Cachuleas, former president of the University of Connecticut, and Anna Marie Sigaris, Rick Miller, President Emeritus of Olin College and an AE member, and Jenna Carpenter, founder of engineering at Campbell University, incoming president of the American Society of Engineering Education, and Carpenter Trey, Trey Carpenter. and also Cheryl Brody Yorchos. <laughs> Honorers today are also USC Provost Chip Zukowski, also a member of the NAE, and Barbara Morgan. USC Trustee Ming Shea, also a member of the NAE. NAE Vice President and longtime NAE colleague Cora Lee Briarley. NAE CEO and former head of Skunk Works at Lockheed Martin here in Southern California, Al Romick. <laughs> and USC Senior Vice President and General Counsel, Byung Su Kim. Thank you for being here. And a special welcome to all our NAE colleagues, many of who are here today. I would be remiss in particular if I did not specifically acknowledge NAE members, Professor Iraja Sagi and Mitra Irsagi, who are here, for championing the program. <laughs> and Diane Chong, also a member of the Gordon Price Committee. And Bill Bolhaus, uh, who is also a member of the National Academy and sits on the Derby Board of Councillors, as well as Stacey, Stace Harris, also on the BOC, on my BOC. A special welcome to Nobel Laureate Ari Warshall and Tamar Warshall, who are, are honoring us with their presence. <laughs> University Professor John Slaughter, Azad Madni, Mark Humayun, and his wife Karen, also members of the National Academy, as well as University Professors uh, Shanghua Tang and Sri Narayanan and Deepa Subramania. Thank you for being here. Last but not least, I would like to greet warmly our NAE staff colleagues, Radka Anebeski, Eileen Erickson, and Deborah Young, without whom events of this type would not be possible. Thank you. And I forgot, and I will not, not forget, my very own wonderful colleague, Mata Mogadam, also a member of the NAE, and her partner, uh, Ken Kokral, who are here with us today. Thank you, Mata. As the Dean of Engineering, I was asked to host this event in this very special place, the Center of Viterbi Engineering here at USC. As some of you may know, this quad was known as the Archimedes Plaza until it was renovated a few years ago through a generous gift by Viterbi alumnus and USC trustee, Dan Epstein. With Archimedes not being as generous to USC, it is now known as the Epstein Family Plaza. As a Greek, I have the right to make that transformation. <laughs> Greek native. <laughs> USC Engineering officially started at USC in 1905. Today, we celebrate 117 years of USC Engineering, 18 years under the name of Andrew and Erna Viterbi. During this time, we have hopefully survived two pandemics. In front of me is Bigler Hall of Engineering over there, the original building where engineering was first housed, that was the dean's office was up there somewhere. 
To my right is Vivian Hall of Engineering, and to my left is All in Hall of Engineering, which has a special significance related to the Grand Challenges Scholars Program, as we will see later. These two buildings were designed by architect William Pereira in the 1960s and reflect his belief in a strong indoor-outdoor relationship. It also means I cannot touch them externally and any renovations have to be done internally because it's an architecturally uh, historic building, which for a Greek uh, history, you know, starts a little bit a few thousand years ago, but nonetheless, this is California, so ev everything <laughs> older than 60 years is historic. Our gathering tonight is also in the presence of the statue of Neil Armstrong. You will see it over there. The first man on the moon and another NAE member. You will see that uh, uh, Neil was elected to the NAE in 1978 for his contribution to aerospace engineering. Neil Armstrong provided the foreword in 2004 of the seminal report, A Century of Innovation, 20 engineering achievements that transformed our lives. That was the prelude of the NAE Grand Challenges. How nice that everything comes together. You might know, not know that Armstrong was also a USC engineering alum, having graduated in 1971 with a master's degree in aerospace engineering. Rumor has it that after he returned to Earth from the moon, Neil realized that he was missing something in his life, which was an engineering degree from USC. Not true, but we do have the copy of his thesis, an impressive thesis, I, I must add. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce President Carol Fault, the 12th president of USC, who among many other things, she has also a joint appointment at the Viterbi School of Engineering. Carol. Thank you, Dean Yortsos. I sort of think this is boss to boss. He's my boss in Viterbi, and I guess I'm his boss at the university. It is great to be here. This has been a week of joy for me, and a lot of it has been about Viterbi. And I, I just wanted to mention that because I got to start off by teaching in a class with my chair, uh, with Burson's class, which was just absolutely wonderful. I got to attend a beautiful um, early career chair, the Ginsburg chair. We brought in a new faculty member there, which was really amazing. Then yesterday, those of you who attended the, uh, the um, remarkable trajectory lecture by John Slaughter are still reveling in the amazing story and beauty that he shared with us. Tonight we're here. This is really a very special night. And next week, we have another new chair, the Nemirovsky chair. So Viterbi all the way today for me and this week. And it's wonderful to be with all of you. And it's great to welcome everyone. I join all of um, Giannis's welcome to you. It's great. I'm getting to sit with President, President John Anderson. Great to have you here. Uh, it's a real honor for us. Vice President Coralie Brierley. 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 Thank you. And CEO Al Rowing, that's fabulous to have you all here. We have lots of people here. Giannis did a fabulous job recognizing everyone, including our trustee Ming She, his wife. The warm Trojan welcome to all of our faculty. Can all the faculty raise their hands who are here with us today? Woo! You're the ones that get the magic done. And how about all of our students who are here with us today? You're why we do everything that we do. And of course, we are here celebrating the four Gordon Prize co-recipients, starting with USC's very own, Giannis Yortsos, <laughs> Thomas Katsilias, Richard Miller, and Jenna Carpenter. So welcome, everyone. We are really honored to host this wonderful reception. For two decades, the Gordon Prize has recognized scholars who are also known for their innovative and their transformative educational advances. This evening, for example, we are celebrating some of the most creative individuals who have been behind the conception and the growth of the Grand Challenges Scholars Program, the GCSP. 
Since 2009, the GCSB has been a roadmap for engineering schools adopted around the world. And as you all know, it's, de it's really designed to provide students with the know-how and the mindset that they need to tackle the NAE's brand challenges. And I have seen from direct experience how this program truly does empower our amazing students to think globally, to act very thoughtfully, and it certainly builds the confidence that they need to make the big differences that they're going to make ahead. The work couldn't really be more important. And I don't think that the grand challenges work in general. could be more relevant than it is today. That reminds me that we just joined the Space Force program too, so that's pretty relevant. Maybe they're, they're flying over to say hi. You know, the, the people in this program are taking on some of the very big challenges of our time, security, health, the joy of living, sustainability, and these are all causes that are very close, I think, to all of our hearts, certainly to mine as an environmental scientist and a university president. For sustainability, I truly believe that engineers are leading every step of the way, but they're opening the tent to working with people from other really important disciplines. At the USC Center for Sustainability Solutions, looking at Mata, engineers and other researchers here are zeroing in on really important issues like carbon reduction, how do we green our transportation and our healthcare systems? How do we develop new energy sources, sustainable building materials? How do we power the blue economy, find solutions to provide clean water to communities around the globe? And what I also love is they collaborate very broadly with stakeholders from NGOs to corporations, and they're using their talents together to make research-backed recommendations. Now, one of USC's biggest strategic moonshots looking forward is to push the frontiers of computing, bringing together our 22 schools to accelerate advanced computing impact on issues like climate change. And we look at NAE's global challenges all the time as we think about setting our own priorities. You know, I think at a time when the public is very skeptical about the capacity of institutions and governments to take on the big challenges of our time, challenges like climate change. I think it is through research and education, these are the most important tools that we have that America's leading researchers and research universities can really use to help restore trust. We know we have taken on grand challenges in the past, and we know that we can do it again. And thanks to programs like the GCSP, which are developing an army of socially conscious, globally minded change makers and future leaders, I do believe that we're going to succeed. We've heard great things about GCSP. Um, some of our alums have said the program has helped them diversify their college coursework and activities. They've talked about it opening doors to careers like cybersecurity, and it has taught them to be socially aware and empathetic, and we know that is, those combination of skills are what it's going to take. This year, I understand that NAE is going to announce about 300 new Grand Challenge scholars, including 32 here at USC. <clears throat> okay, drum roll, the majority of USC scholars are women. The Grand Challenge scholars include amazing students like Rachel Lau from Duke, who's going to speak shortly and whose research will help us better understand and mitigate natural disasters. And there are students like soon-to-be USC graduates, Jessica Santos, who's going to be fighting for environmental justice with a real passion for chemical engineering and public health. And Sage Clark, a first-gen student veteran and a new father who will protect our country against nuclear threats. Give them a hand. Universities have a real duty to prepare future leaders with the mindset of global citizens. And because of this 
program and students at institutions like Duke, like Olin, like Campbell, like ASU, USC, and others, we can really reimagine what is going to be possible for our planet and our society. Dr. Alan Kay, a very famous computer scientist and an NAE member, once said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So I'm looking out at all those inventors. Thank you, Yanis, Tom, Rick, Jenna, for inventing the future and inspiring engineering students to really take their talents to new heights. So congratulations to the well-deserved Gordon Prize rec recipients. We're very, very proud of you. <laughs> now I will turn it back to Dean Yortzos. <laughs> Thank you, President Fault, for the wonderful remarks and for thoughtfully placing GCSP in a larger co context. GCSP started as an idea in 2009, inspired by the NAE, NAE Grand Challenges, which themselves were articulated in 2008, a year before that. The Grand Challenges were in turn inspired by the 2004 report I mentioned before, A Century of Innovation. Both the NAE Grand Challenges and the GCSP emanated from the important belief that human ingenuity and innovation, if properly summoned and nourished, can solve the grand challenges of our times, based on scientific, engineering, and technological advances. It is this belief in purposeful, human-centric, engineering pursuits to engineer a better world for all that permeates GCSP throughout its history and sets the background for its growth and its flourishing. We have created a short video to tra the trace the history and evolution of the program. Please direct your attention to the video screens. <laughs> Throughout human history, engineering has driven the advance of civilization. Electricity, food and water, automobiles and airplanes, radio and television, spacecraft and lasers, antibiotics, computers, and the internet. But what about the future? How can we make our world more sustainable, secure, healthy, and joyful? These are the NAE's Grand Challenges, announced for the first time in 2008. Challenges related to sustainability, make solar energy economical, develop carbon sequestration methods, manage the nitrogen cycle, provide access to clean water, provide energy from fusion. Challenges related to security, restore and improve urban infrastructure, prevent nuclear terror, secure cyberspace. Challenges related to health, engineer better medicines, advance health informatics, reverse engineer the brain, and challenges related to enriching life, enhance virtual reality, advance personalized learning, and engineer the tools of scientific discovery. In March 2009, Thomas Katsuleas, Richard Miller, and Yanis Yortsos stepped up to help create the new brand of engineers needed to resolve these challenges. First, by holding a Grand Challenges Summit in Durham, North Carolina. In my view, we're here to observe and celebrate the power of great ideas. Young people thinking about the relationship between science and medicine and mathematics and engineering and making the world a better place. And I certainly want to thank the three great men who really pulled this whole thing together, Tom Katsileas, uh, Yanis Yurtsos, and Rick uh, Miller. The outcome of that meeting was the creation of the Grand Challenges Scholars Program, formally launched at the 2009 Annual Engineering Deans Meeting in Boston. The program accelerated in 2010, when the second Grand Challenges Summit was held at the University of Southern California. This is the most exciting era for engineering and science in human history. The relevance of engineering and science now often takes on an appeal to young people, and it's truly inspirational. But it's very gratifying for me to see this Grand Challenges Summit turn into what could only be categorized as a national movement. An outcome of the USC Summit was to expand the program globally, 
In 2013, the NAE partnered with the Royal Academy of Engineering and the Chinese Academy of Engineering to host a global summit every two years in London, Beijing, and Washington, D.C. A seminal moment came in 2014 when 122 engineering schools pledged to start a GCSP in their institution. In 2015, the GCSP leadership, by then enriched with Dean Jenna Carpenter, presented a commitment to President Obama to graduate 20,000 Grand Challenges scholars over the next decade. The creation in 2016 of a National Coordination Office at the NAE further strengthened the reach of the program. By 2022, the Grand Challenges Scholars Program had graduated 1,760 students with 97 participating schools, including 21 internationally. In 2020, the GCSP was instrumental in launching the COVID-19 Engineering Call to Action, which became an NAE initiative as multi-generational teams of students and engineers combined their resources to confront the pandemic putting the GCSP into action on a pressing problem. Such efforts to mobilize engineering students to address important grand challenge-like problems are likely to continue in the future. Having reached this key point in the history of the GCSP program, how is its future unfolding? By strengthening the five competencies and mindsets in research, by encouraging students to hug the exponential and engage with the ever-increasing power of technological discovery in interdisciplinarity by advancing the engineering plus mindset which empowers all other disciplines in innovation and entrepreneurship by helping instill a mindset of bringing breakthrough discoveries from the lab to the marketplace in global understanding by developing the mindset of awareness of human nature and cultures and in service learning by instilling the mindset that deepens students' focus on the impact of engineering and technology on society. In this endeavor, the GCSP will keep creating a generation of Grand Challenges scholars with both outstanding competence and outstanding character, which together produce trust. With this new blueprint for engineering education, one that expands the engineer of 2020 to a new paradigm, the GCSP will continue to change the conversation about engineering, about who we are, what we do, and what we look like, and stay true to our mission to engineer a better world for all humanity. Thank you. The impact of GCSP has been significant and growing every day. Earlier this evening, we celebrated the graduation of this year's class <clears throat> of 32 GCSP Viterbi students. A number of them are here with us this evening. They will officially graduate next Friday at the USC commencement, but I would like to ask them to stand up and be recognized. Thank you. Also with us this evening is Rachel Lau, Duke Engineering graduate, GCSP alumna, and current PhD student at Duke in Civil and Environmental Engineering with a focus on geophysical disaster mitigation. She's one of the more than 1,700 GCSP alumni who have graduated from the program over the years. Rachel was just announced as a 2022-2023 Fulbright Research Scholar and Rhodes Graduate Fellow in Interdisciplinary Research. In 2020, she helped lead the National Academy of Engineers Call to Action from the GCSP perspective on the COVID-19 crisis. Rachel co-founded EcoManages, a research cohort on earthquake risk and resiliency between Duke and the Institute of Engineering in Kathmandu, Nepal, and is an incoming researcher at the National Society for Earthquake Technology in Nepal. She currently serves as the president of the Southeast, Re Southeast Region of Engineers Without Borders USA. Rachel epitomizes the attributes of the GCSP program. I would like to ask her to come up and say a few words. Rachel.
bear with me here. Thank you guys. Thank you, Giannis. I was born in 1998. Um, let that sink in for a moment. All right. Um, I'm about to make things a lot worse. Uh, members of our incoming freshman class were born in 2004. Before you know it, there'll be graduates like me and professionals like you. That's inevitable. I say this to point out that young people are here, that we're here to learn and we're here to build a new future. And I'm here to tell you how the Grand Challenges Scholars Program helped me build my own. As an undergraduate at Duke, I actually had a really difficult time in the traditional classroom environment. I became an engineer because I love people and solving problems, but many aspects of my education were making me second guess my ability to be an engineer. It wasn't until I learned about the Grand Challenge of Scholars Program and what it stood for that I really felt connected to my place in engineering. As an NAE Grand Challenge of Scholar, I was invested in as an engineering student to make to take on some of the greatest challenges facing humanity. My focus was equitable water, um, access to water and sanitation. I started my journey by designing a gravity pipe network in Madagascar, where I lived for two months following my sophomore year. While I was there, I personally witnessed how the natural environment directly alters the quality of life of individuals, specifically through disaster, and that's when it all clicked. I dedicated my following semesters to understanding the long-term disaster of climate change by researching air and water quality in Jiangsu, China. My junior year, I founded a research collaboration between Duke and the Institute of Engineering Polchuk in Geohazard Early Warning, one that I maintain to this day. I met others from this amazing community in the Global Grand Challenges Summit in London and the subsequent annual meeting in Washington, D.C., and I developed friendships and working relationships that I treasure to this day. I even worked with a lot of you on the NAE's COVID-19 call for engineering action. Hello. Needless to say, it's been quite an amazing experience. The Grand Challenge of Scholars program brought me to my passion and my people. Now one might ask, couldn't any engineering program have done this? And my answer is this. Does every engineering program put humanity at the center of its mission? Because as much as I'd like to answer that with yes, we all know that isn't true. But if we don't have each other, then what do we really have? If the Grand Challenge of Scholars program taught me one thing, it's that investing in our next generation of engineers, people just like me, and teaching them to put humanity at the center of their missions will foster a generation of change makers. Because the engineer of the future isn't just a mathematician, a physicist, or a system solver. They're also advocates, barrier breakers, and leaders. And what is so exciting about right now is that we are in positions to learn from the previous generation and from each other. The Grand Challenge of Scholar Program empowered me to dare to think bigger. I am so excited to be a part of this community, and I am so excited to help future scholars dream big too. From the bottom of my heart, thank you guys so much. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Rachel. I met Rachel for the first time through Zoom. And so I knew her in a two-dimensional little portrait. I met her for the first time in person yesterday. And I was blown away with the personality and the character and all the things that you saw earlier today. She's a true representative of Gen Z. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. I would also like to recognize two other GCSP alums who are here with us. Andrew Mang, Andrew, please stand, stand up, who also co-led co the National Academy of Engineers Call to Action, and our very own Ria Chowdhury. Ria, where are you? I hope that the short review that you saw in the video and also from, uh, you heard from Rachel explains the GCSP, its origin and its evolution, its impact and its future. I, truly, we view the GCSP as changing the conversation about engineering, who we are, what we do, and what we look like, and presents a blueprint for the education of a new breed of engineers with purpose, character, and competence. As 
President Carroll mentioned, uh, Carroll Fold mentioned, about half of the GCSP cohorts are women. And I know that having this program at USC since 2009 has dramatically altered the attraction to USC Viterbi of more women engineering students. Indeed, with compositions of entering class increasing steadily, the entering class at USC Viterbi since 2019 has been gender balanced three years in a row. And so will be the incoming class of 2022 if, I, if my uh, a senior associate in Kelly Gullis is right in this prediction. What a wonderful compliment to the NAE Initiative Engineering Girl, which we celebrated its 20th anniversary yesterday at Irvine. This set of new and empowering mindsets attracts to engineering true agents of change who, like Rachel, Andrew, and Rhea, are inspiring and will provide the leadership of tomorrow. Finally, before I close and allow dinner to be served, I wanted to make a couple of final remarks. Whether by coincidence or by intention, the all-in name has been a common thread to GCSP. Let me explain. You see, both Rick Miller and Tom Katsuleas served as associate deans of engineering at USC with offices in all in Hall of Engineering, right there, <laughs> the building I mentioned a few minutes ago, and where the dean's office, my office, currently is. And while in June 2008, when the program was being conceived, Tom had already started as dean of engineering at Duke. He was known as Dean K, a la Coach K. And Rick was in his eighth year as founding president of All In College at, in Boston, Massachusetts, no longer at USC. The connection we had together was established long ago and, it were, and started when both were here and this connection transcended our different new settings. Tom, I remember very well the, the phone call in June 2008 in my office out there when you, you asked me, what do you think about this idea? It enabled this program to grow and flourish as a network of schools now with similar interests. In today's academic reality, where the mindset often prevails that if it is not invented here, it's not a good idea, the GCSP is a program that emphatically breaks this convention. It has become an example of a collaborative global network of schools in a distributed organizational scheme Okay, I'm not going to say blockchain here, but distributed nonetheless. One that former NAE president Dan Mott has aptly paralleled to the starfish and the spider web. Spider web. Indeed, the leadership of the program is distributed among many and has moved from the NAE and Professor Ramakrishnan's leadership to ASU, with new, its new director, Amy Traubridge, on the engineering faculty at ASU. Both Amy and Rama are here today. I would like to, to ask them to stand up and be recognized. <laughs> Last but not least, I'd like to recognize Louise Yates, who served in the Dean's Office for many years, retiring in 2019 as Senior Associate Dean for Student Affairs, who worked closely with me and with Tom at the onset of the program, and was instrumental to the formative growth of the program. I'm thankful and indebted to Liz for her help in the growth of her program and for taking the time to join us tonight. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> now, let's take a break, enjoy dinner, and our program will resume after dinner service. Thank you. Please welcome T.Y. John from the Thornton School of Music for a special performance.
<laughs> the teleprompter is up, in case you did not know that. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you, T.Y. John, for the wonderful performance. He is one of our students from the Thornton School of Music. We are so lucky here at UAC to have world-class performing music students from the world-renowned world Thornton School of Music. Thank you very much. And now it's my true honor and privilege to introduce John Anderson, president of the National Academy of Engineering and a fellow chemical engineer. John became president of the Academy in July 2019. His professional career has spanned 48 years in academia, served as president of the Illinois Institute of Technology, as provost and executive vice president at Case Western Reserve, and his 28-year tenure on the faculty of Carnegie Mellon included eight years as dean of the College of Engineering and 11 year as he had, years as head of the Chemical Engineering Department. His first faculty appointment was in Cornell in Chemical Engineering. As professor, he has taught classes to first year undergraduates all the way through to PhD students. He has held visiting professorships at MIT as a Guggenheim Fellow, the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands, and the University of Melbourne in Australia. He has received a number of honorary doctorates from Illinois Institute of Technology, the University of Delaware, and RPI. John was elected to the National Academy in 1992 for his research on colloidal hydrodynamics and membrane transport. He's a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and the American Association for the Advancement of Science. He was also a presidential appointment to the National Science Board for the period 2014 to 2020. John received a bachelor's degree from U University of Delaware and a PhD degree from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, both in chemical engineering. Please welcome John Anderson. Thank you, Giannis. You know, if you, if you live long enough, you can get a good bio. And, uh, <laughs> I want to emphasize that I'm 48 years in academia, but I started when I was 10 years old, so to keep that in mind. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and to welcome everyone to a, to a great occasion. I want to go off the script a little bit first and, uh, and, and make, make a few comments about um, what I saw here today. You know, uh, education is, is much more than the sum of courses. and we saw the much more today, the Grand Challenge of Scholars Program. Just fantastic uh, uh, what is being done here and, and other places around the country with the Grand Challenges and with other extracurricular uh, educational activities. I think we're waking up as engineering educators to the fact that we have to interact with society, been mentioned several times, and by Rachel, of course, and I think uh, it's really important for us to do that. Uh, I also want to emphasize that uh, the, the Grand Challenges Scholars Program is independent of the National Academy of Engineering. The Grand Challenges is part of the, of the NAE, but the program is really what the four winners of this award did and all the schools that, that uh, uh, are involved in it. And we are so proud to be associated with it and so proud to support it as best we can. And uh, I think it's made a real impact in education. Um, you know, leadership, I've thought a lot about leadership over the years, and I think the most important thing about leadership is, is doing the right thing. I think most of us want to do the right thing, but the most difficult problem is deciding what the right thing is to do. And this is where diversity and inclusion plays a huge role in getting leaders to, d to decide what the right thing is and then execute what that is. So I just wanted to make those introductory comments. I want to sincerely thank the um, uh, University of Southern California, President uh, Carol Folt, uh, and Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Charles Zukoski, for hosting this event. Now, I have to say that uh, I don't know a Charles Zukoski, but I do know a Chip Zukoski. All right, so I'm, I'm, thank, I'm going to assume that's the same person. I'm going to thank him here. I also want to recognize the 2022 committee chair, Diane Chong, 
retired vice president of materials, manufacturing, structure and support, Boeing Research and Technology, and NA I want to thank NAE Executive Officer Al Romick. It is my privilege this evening to present the NAE's, indeed the world's most prestigious award in engineering education, the Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and, education, uh, engineering and Technology Education. Unfortunately, Bernie Gordon, the originator and benefactor of the award, could not be with us this evening. He sends his congratulations to the winners. Now let's, let us take a moment to learn a little bit about the remarkable engineer behind this prize, Bernie Gordon. The Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education was inaugurated in 2002 by the National Academy of Engineering. The intent of the Gordon Prize is to recognize new modalities and experiments in education that develop effective engineering leaders. Now, for over 10 years, the Gordon Prize has recognized individuals that have innovated in areas such as curricular design, teaching methods, and technology-enabled learning that strengthen students' capabilities and desire to grow into leadership roles. The award was created to recognize professors, teachers, in technical institutions who understood that there was much more to engineering than learning theory, and that there was a need to inculcate, not in everyone, because that's not possible, uh, an attitude. Uh, there's an old phrase that it takes knowledge, skills, and attitude to be a successful engineer, let alone an engineering leader. This knowledge, skills, and attitude propelled Bernard M. Gordon to found or contribute to multiple companies and institutions throughout his long career, earning over 200 patents, being awarded the National Medal of Technology, being inducted to the National Academy of Engineering, among numerous other honors and awards, in general, embodying the very spirit of his namesake award. So this attitude is one, you don't get born with it, it's one that gets developed by your teachers, the successes of your jobs, your understanding that after a while you're, you're expected to do that. It, it, and it's a hard thing to put into words. Fostering these leadership skills in engineering is vital to making the profession personally rewarding, successful in the competitive marketplace, and enriching to society at large. The Gordon Prize recognizes educational efforts that cultivate this leadership. Both the National Academy of Engineering and I together recognized that the educational process in technology had changed so much over the past decades that there was now a dearth of engineering leaders. It does not take a large percentage of engineers to be leaders. It's about the same ratio as a platoon leader to a combat platoon, you know, one in 20. If you can get one in 20 engineers to have the capability, the desire, the will uh, to be the leader, you increase the productivity tremendously. It's not about academic achievement, it's about industrial, real world, turning out products that society needs that will enhance the economy of the United States. These leadership qualities are critical to America's competitiveness in the 21st century. The teachers and educational approaches that are recognized by the Gordon Prize are an immense service to the engineering community, to the engineer as an individual, and make the world a better place for all. Mm. 
I now ask uh, President Folt and Dr. Diane Chong to please join me to present the 2022 Gordon Prize. Before we present the prize, a little information about it. The recipients of the Gordon Prize receive a $500,000 cash award, half granted to the recipient and the other half to the institution to support the continued development, refinement, and dissemination of the recognized innovation. The recipients also receive a commemorative medallion and certificate. In addition, the recipients are invited to present a public lecture on their prize-winning work during the NEE's annual meeting in Washington, which this year will be held on Sunday, October 2nd in Washington. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, the Bernard M. Gordon Prize for Innovation in Engineering and Technology Education awardees are the Grand Sco Challenges Scholars Program pioneers, Dr. Jenna P. Carpenter, Dr. Thomas C. Casulius, Dr. Richard K. Miller, and Dr. Giannis C. Yortzis. They are being recognized for creating an innovative education program that prepares students to become future engineering leaders who will address the NAE grand challenges of engineering. Offered at engineering schools worldwide, the Grand Challenges Scholars Program provides a combined curricular and extracurricular approach to prepare undergraduate students to tackle objectives that could dramatically improve the quality of life around the world. Kutsuleas Miller and Yorsis co-founded the program in 2009 at their respective universities, Duke University, Olin College, and the University of Southern California. Carpenter joined the original group later and made valuable contributions drawing on her research and integrating STEM curricula. She served for seven years as chair of the Grand Challenges Scholars Program Steering Committee. Since its launch, the Grand Challenges Scholars Program has spread to more than 90 engineering schools across the country, as well as several prominent international programs. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, presentation to the recipients in alphabetical order. When I call your name, please come to the podium to receive your prize and have your picture taken. After everyone has received their prize, we will gather for a, a group photo. Jenna Carpenter, founding dean and professor of engineering at Campbell University in North Carolina and president-elect of the American Society for Engineering Education. I want to commend the photographer. <laughs> he is extremely precise. <laughs> and he's even managed to get me in the right position, which is not easy. So thank you. Uh, next, Thomas C. Katsuleas, Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering and Physics at the University of Connecticut, where he was also the 16th president.
Richard K. Miller, Rick Miller as we know him, Emeritus Pref President and Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Franklin W. Olin College of Engineering. And last but not least, Jana C. Yorsis, <laughs> Dean of the USC Viterbi School of Engineering, holder of the Zarab Gabrielian Dean's Chair in Engineering, and the Chester Dolly Professor. I now invite uh, Dr. Katsuleas to offer remarks on behalf of his colleagues on their prize-winning program. Tom? Thank you. Thank you, John. I suppose it's almost obligatory this close to Hollywood to begin with, I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> but seriously, on behalf of my colleagues, Rick, Yanis, and Jenna, I would like to thank Dr. Chong and her committee and I would especially like to thank Bernard Gordon for his generous gift, establishing this prize as one of the world's premier education prizes, and in so doing, uplifting the efforts of all of us who are engaged in the enhancement of engineering education. Thank you, President Folt and USC for hosting this lovely ceremony. And uh, President Anderson, Executive Director Romig, distinguished guests, friends, and family. Thank you for being here to help us celebrate this wonderful honor. There are so many to thank, and I will mention a few now and more as, and more as I go. First of all, Professor Araja Shaghi for the time and effort we all know it takes to assemble a strong nomination. Amy Trowbridge and your dedicated team who run the community-based GCSP network, and the advisory council represented tonight by Al Romig and Andrew Meng. The talented leaders of the original implementation of the GCSP, including Louise Yates, who is here tonight, 
Monty Reichert and Martha Absher at Duke and Lynn Stein at Olin College. B.L. Ramakrishna, who stewarded the program so expertly, and Randy Atkins, who along with NAE President Wolf conceived of the grand challenges as a way to communicate the importance of engineering. You know, by now you've gathered that the history of the GCSP is an LA story. As Yanis mentioned, the original three amigos, Rick and Yanis and I, all got to know each other as a result of working together here at USC, and particularly here in Olino Hall. And our amiga, Jenna, was also working in an LA, but in her case, it was Louisiana. So we're <laughs> glad to have the four amiga amigos. Your partnership uh, to the three of you has been one of the greatest pleasures of my professional life, and I want to thank you. When the NAE came out with its list of grand challenges for the 21st century, we amigos saw this less as a list than a call to action. And it prompted us to ask a fateful question. If this is where engineering is going in the 21st century, are we preparing our students for it? Or is there something more they need? From that, the GCSP was born. It received a big boost along the way from NAE presidents Chuck Vest and Dan Moat, but the biggest boost of all came from the White House when Tom Khalil and President Obama offered to host us there if we could get 50 deans to sign on, and over 120 did. From there, it took off, and I would say the future of the GCSP network is even brighter. We are on track, as you've heard, to graduate over 300 Grand Challenge Scholars this year from 68 different institutions. We're expanding the focus of the GCSP beyond the original NAE Grand Challenges, including, for example, the UN Sustainable Development Goals and even such vexing challenges as engineering world peace. And we're building on our foundational partnership with the NAE and adding to it other organizations such as the ASEE, American Society of Engineering Educators, National Society for Black Engineers, and leaders of industry. Graduates of the program, as of this month, over 2,000 of them have taken it on themselves to organize an alumni network and have already been instrumental in sparking, for example, the NAE's COVID-19 call for engineering action. With its growing community-based network, the Grand Challenges Scholars Program continues to be a pathway for capturing the imagination of diverse and talented students and also empowering them to contribute to global solutions today and in the future. Thank you again on behalf of the four of us for this tremendous honor. Thank you, Jenna, Tom, Rick, and Giannis. We're very pleased to recognize you as esteemed Gordon Prize recipients. And now I turn the podium over back to Dean Yorsis to conclude the presentation. Thank you to all you who are here tonight. We appreciate your attendance. Thank you very much, John. We are very humble and grateful to have had the opportunity to host this event at USC Viterbi and the USC campus. On behalf of all of us, I want to thank the NAE, the Gordon Price Committee, nominators and supporters, and the many graduates of the Grand Challenge Scholars Program, and those who will follow them, who will help build a better world for all. It was a real pleasure to host you all. Drive carefully and fight on. <laughs>